In recent months, increasing details have emerged about the future of the F-22, America's premier air superiority fighter. This video will outline the Raptor's modernization efforts, place them in operational context and explain why its previously scheduled early retirement plan has been ditched. The video will go beyond the new sensors, new missile, new helmet and the fact the US Air Force is rushing F-22 to become the first fighter jet in history to link with unmanned fighter jet drones. What is the context of it all in the near future US Air Force plans against China? And how might the F-22 fare, ushering in an era of sixth-generation air combat through its drones? Yep, we made a bink of plushie. If you want one, for yourself or as a gift, do check out our Crowdmate store. The link is available below in the video description. It's not too small, not too big, perfect for your desk or your shelf next to your military history books. Or you can give it away. We've made it as low cost as humanly possible, which is very hard when you're contracting very small production runs. Well, go ahead and treat yourself. In spring 2021, the Air Force surprised many by announcing the F-22 would be retired around 2030. However, since then, especially from 2023 onward, news of modernization programs has grown. When combined, these upgrades could keep the Raptor the world's deadliest fighter until early 2030s. The previous Air Force leadership saw the F-22 as inefficient and too costly to upgrade and keep. Yet even before the 2024 elections, attitudes shifted. Current leadership now says there is no firm retirement date, possibly extending service into the 2040s. So what changed? In early 2021, the Air Force's sixth-generation fighter program showed promising progress. Multiple tech demonstrators had flown, and rapid development of flexible, upgradable designs was still the goal. But in 2022, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall stated that approach wouldn't work. The ANGAD fighter, now called the F-47, would instead follow a more traditional, longer development path. That meant delays to the F-47 service entry and possibly slower production ramp-up. Meanwhile, from 2021, China ramp up production of its stealthy J-20 fighter, a trend that has only accelerated since. Faced with the risk of falling behind in combat aircraft numbers, Air Force leadership logically prioritized every available airframe. Despite a small fleet of just 185 planes, the F-22 remains the most potent platform. So why not invest in modernization? In fact, flip-flopping over Raptor's future had already started by late 2021. That's when Lockheed Martin secured a 10 billion contract to modernize the F-22 fleet, with deliveries ending in 2031 a sharp contrast to earlier plans to retire the jet by 2030. The current effort likely retains many items from 2021, though not all. Just under 8 billion is currently allocated for Raptor's modernization before 2030. For perspective, the entire Raptor program cost 62 billion in 2006, which is around 99 billion today. Alternatively, 7.8 billion could buy 94 additional F-35s. The modernization list is extensive. Among the less decisive upgrades are a new friend or foe system and enhanced communications gear, all of which will marginally boost combat effectiveness. In Vietnam, friend or foe issues forced close-range identification, possibly causing extra losses. In future wars, long-range ID could give the US a key edge. Communications-wise, the F-22 won't get MADL, the F-35's advanced data link. The Raptor's dated construction makes said addition impractical. Even Link 16 took years to implement. Transmit capability only arrived in 2021. Engine maintenance will also improve through new software and 3D printed parts, reducing costs and slightly improving availability. The Raptor will adopt the Air Force's new standard helmet. The current helmet is 40 years old. The next generation fixed wing helmet is lighter, more comfortable, easier on the hearing and compatible with modern display systems. 
Due to the F-22's cramped cockpit, the plane couldn't accommodate the joint helmet-mounted queuing system like the F-35 uses. But development has progressed. Thales Scorpion helmet mounted display has been under evaluation for years and in 2023 Thales got a contract to test its integration on the F-22. Still, even if adopted, the helmet display won't be a game changer. It will improve pilot efficiency by reducing the need to check cockpit screens and helping monitor drone wingmen. However, close-range dogfights are unlikely, so better sidewinder queuing won't matter much in practice. Another upgrade is the EGIM system, a more jam-resistant navigational unit. It's a minor advancement typical of tech updates. GPS jamming against high-flying jets is already difficult. It would require nearby higher-altitude enemy jammers. That's unrealistic now, though a future adversary like China might soon deploy jamming satellites in orbit. There are to be some radar improvements, but there is very little publicized about them. There is literally just one line available in DoD documents, saying that F-22 modernization includes dynamic synthetic aperture radar. Now, the latter part of that name, synthetic aperture radar, means that radar makes a 3D image of an object or terrain. That's old stuff, though over the decades radars have been getting much better at it. The dynamic aspect likely means the radar can adjust its beams during scanning, possibly allowing it to image and track targets simultaneously or better focus on specific areas. This should enhance air-to-ground targeting and long-range identification in air-to-air -air combat. Still, this seems like a software-driven incremental upgrade. There's no indication of hardware changes. Unlike the F-35, which is getting a brand new radar and has an upgrade-friendly design planned for thousands of airframes, the F-22's older architecture and small fleet make hardware upgrades less cost-efficient. Without them, the Raptor's radar may fall behind not only the F-35's radar, but also potentially advanced Chinese systems by the late 2020s. But if secret hardware upgrades are planned, they would be highly significant. Also underway is the Low Drag Tanks and Pylon program, introducing new external fuel tanks. While only blurry images exist, DoD documents suggest these tanks are stealthier, create less drag, support efficient supersonic flight, and extend range. The pylons can be jettisoned in flight, just like the old 600-gallon tanks. Those older tanks, large and drag-heavy, were mainly used to ferry F-22s into theater, not practical for combat missions. The new slimmer tanks likely carry less fuel but improve supersonic efficiency and offer a stealthier option for long-range missions. They can be retained when top-tier stealth isn't needed or dropped mid-mission after use. Pentagon documents also mentioned low observability signature management. In theory, this could imply a new stealth coating using modern materials. Some past images showed US jets, including the F-22, with a reflective mirror-like coating, though there has been no official explanation. But as a F-117 was also tested with those, it's not necessarily a test of an operational new stealth coating. It could have also been new fundamental research, applicable to various future planes. A more practical interpretation is that existing coatings are being improved for easier maintenance. Alternatively, it may not be the coating at all, Stealth improvements might come from reducing the electronic emissions of Raptor sensors, making it harder to detect. Since such developments are highly classified, details remain scarce. Now on to the good stuff. The Raptor is said to receive upgraded countermeasures and electronic warfare systems, specifically electronic warfare enhancements to counter evolving threats likely referring to software upgrades that help the radar and sensors resist enemy jamming. The F-22's radar can also function as a jammer, and its distributed sensors may be upgraded to better detect threats despite interference. These are all forms of countermeasures, but the Raptor might also receive physical ones. For example, Navy F-35's recently adopted Bright Cloud, a mini decoy that emits fake radar returns to mislead enemy systems, it's fired from flare-like dispensers. If suitable for the F-35, it could be implemented on the F-22 as well. Another upgrade is the infrared defensive system, the IRDS, replacing the missile approach warning sensors. 
While not as capable as the F-35's full distributed aperture system, it should detect incoming missiles earlier, improving survivability. One DoD document notes it aims to detect long-range missile launches. If it can spot AMRAAM-class missiles instead of just short-range sidewinders, it could significantly improve the F-22's chances of evading attacks. A widely discussed upgrade is the new infrared search and track pod, apparently fitted in pairs. Though these pods reduce stealth, they offer the ability to detect enemy heat signatures passively. Their large size suggests greater sensitivity, possibly surpassing the Eurofighter pirate system, which reportedly tracked head-on targets 70 kilometers away two decades ago. Today, if Raptors will indeed be able to track enemy planes from AMRAAM launch distances without even turning on their radars, having a way to confirm enemy location and fire silently could be a big deal in certain situations. A 2019 study showed IR sensors similar to Pirate and Skyward could detect rear aspect F-35 like targets at 70 to 90 km with a wide search and up to 130 km with a narrow queued search. The F-22's pods may double the resolution of Skyward sensor, offering improved though not doubled range. Likely only select Raptors in a formation will carry the pods, possibly flying quite away from other Raptors scanning from the flanks, for example. With two pods about 9 meters apart, angular resolution should allow range estimates, and enemy locations could be shared via Raptor's intraflight data link, allowing missile launches without using radar. Even more important is the Keystone program, which replaces the existing radar warning receiver with a next-gen system. The ALR-94 receiver was revolutionary, able to geolocate enemy emissions. Allegedly, it even supported missile launches without radar input, given the right target and conditions. A system two decades more advanced could significantly enhance signal detection and processing, a critical capability in modern warfare. Superior radar and signal detection systems provide a shoot-first advantage, possibly preventing the enemy from firing at all. These new sensors will go beyond threat warnings. They will help give an accurate picture of the battlefield. Modernization will also improve pilot interfaces and efficiency. Crucially, all these upgrades are possible thanks to the shift towards open source architecture, without which many of these changes would be economically unfeasible, given the F-22's aging design. The AIM-260 missile will soon replace the AMRAAM on the F-22. Its first large-scale production order is set for 2026, with service entry expected shortly after. The Pentagon has kept details under wraps, including the missile's appearance until recently. Aviation Week editor Steve Tremble reported seeing Air Force charts for missile test areas. AIM-260's area circle was twice the size of AMRAAM's. Also based on engine markings on the missile graphic, the missile likely has at least 30% more propellant than the AMRAAM. If it indeed features a dual pulse motor, its range could exceed AMRAAM's by over 50%. The AIM-260 was test-fired from Super Hornets in 2024, suggesting F-22 integration is well underway, possibly already complete. This missile will be a major leap for any aircraft, but especially for the Raptor, which pairs long-range passive sensors, stealth, and a still powerful radar with such a lethal missile. Last on the modernization list is Drone Wingman Integration, announced this past July. Starting in 2026, the Air Force will begin outfitting F-22s and pilots to work with autonomous fighter drones, also known as collaborative combat aircraft. Raptors will be the first jets to receive this operational capability. The first generation of these drones, set to enter service by 2029, will be controlled via tablets, which pilots are getting. In 2024, Major General Scott Job stated simulations showed F-22 pilots could control up to six drones without being overwhelmed. Realistically, at least in the early years, pilots will likely control only a couple, due to low production numbers. We have covered the drone concept in previous videos, but in short, these aircraft could revolutionize air combat by providing additional sensors, jammers and missile payloads across wider areas, possibly allowing Raptors to stay out of enemy range completely. 
This development effectively upgrades the Raptor into a so-called 5.5 generation fighter. The biggest challenge for the Raptor fleet is its limited size. Of 185 airframes in service, only 143 are combat coded. The rest are used for training and testing and will likely not receive full modernization. That combat ready figure is significantly smaller than the F-35 fleet and notably below the growing Chinese J-20 fleet. While Raptors can't rely on numbers, they will rely on superior technology to remain dominant in air combat, at least until 6th generation fighters become more widespread in the mid-2030s. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together. <laughs>